Hi, Hernando. My name is Ellen, and I will be uh, correcting this essay for you. I see we've got a bar chart um, of the cost of hotel stays in a bunch of different cities. Um, this one is a challenging bar chart because there's not really a lot of information here, and so you really have to find a way to kind of stretch it out um, so that you develop it well. Um, Looking at your answer here, it does seem kind of short. Um, you may or may not know that there is no word minimum anymore. It used to be 150 words, but that's not the case anymore. However, you still want to stay above 150 words because anything below 150 is probably going to be too underdeveloped. So, um, Doing a quick word count here, it looks like your answer is 116 words. So I can tell you straight away that you probably needed to to stretch out and to make comparisons um, among the different data, okay? But enough about that for now. Let's actually read what you wrote. The You call it a graphic. I would have just stuck with um, a graph because uh, this kind of... I don't know. It makes us think of an adjective, really. So it, somebody could quickly read this, the graphic estimates, okay, and which is not what you want them to do. So you could have just called it a graph, or even better yet, you could have called it what it is, which is a bar chart. So why don't we try that? The bar chart estimates the costs and enumerate the most costly cities in the world by overnight hotel stay in 2013. Okay, I'm not really crazy about this enumerate here. First of all, grammatically it's wrong. It needed to have an S at the end. And second of all, it just doesn't really feel like an appropriate word here. Um, so let's get rid of that. Let's try it one more time. The bar chart estimates the costs. Um, let me just double check one more thing. It's not really an estimate, actually, looking at it. I was looking to see if it says anywhere that it's an estimate. So you could have just said um, the bar chart describes, or the bar, how about this? The bar chart presents the costs uh, of an average night, average overnight hotel stay in um, the six most expensive cities in 2013. Okay, um, that's probably a better way of saying it. All right, uh, let's see. The highest hotel rate belongs to the city of Monte Carlo with 338 and change uh, a night. Musket, in the same way, follows the lead, okay, with 327.74 cost above New York City, which averages 304.87 per night. In a constant variant appear the last three most expensive cities that are Key West, Rio de Janeiro, and Moscow, estimating 284, 273, and 257, respectively. It is interesting to highlight that every single city has a margin difference in price of 10 to $20 of daily rate. Therefore, the gap is not so noticeable and far from the other hotels. Okay, so... Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, let's see. So you had uh, you had your introduction. We talked about your introduction quite a bit. We talked about um, how you could have said this a little, uh, worded maybe a little more appropriately. Okay, and then I see here, um, I'm assuming you meant this to be your overview. However, you should know that an overview doesn't typically have data. And you focused quite a bit on data here. You talked about this difference of price of 10 to $20. So um, you don't want to do that typically. What you want to do is just really give us the key trend, the most, you know, most obvious thing. You could have said that uh, of the six qu cities in question, Monte Carlo was, um, was the most expensive, okay, for an overnight hotel stay. That was one way you could have said it. Um, you could have said that um, maybe, let's say, uh, all six uh, ho all six uh, cities had um, an average hotel uh, stay um, of over two hundred and fifty dollars per night. Uh, you could have said that, although I don't really love that because you are including some data there. So you probably could have just stuck with, of the six cities Monte Carlo had the most, you could have also said that Mo Moscow was the least. That was something okay as well. So that's the kind of information you really want to point out 
in your overview. Now, some people like the overview at the end. Others prefer it at right after the introduction. Personally, I like it after the introduction. There are a variety of reasons for that. Um, but it doesn't really matter matter either way. Um, the thing that you need to remember is that you don't want to include any data and you don't really or you know specific data like numbers and also you don't want to make any sort of assumptions um, that aren't included in the chart. Okay so you don't want to perhaps say why Monte Carlo is the most expensive because it's nothing it's not what you're being asked to talk about. All right but you didn't do that so that's fine. Okay so we talked a little bit about your introduction. We talked a little bit about about this, although I do want to talk about some of the grammar. Now I want to talk about this paragraph. Um, what you essentially did is you just went down the row, Monte Carlo, Muscat, New York, Key West, etc, etc, etc. And this is something you want to avoid um, because it's what examiners call mechanical. Um, in other words, there's no comparison made, there's no real sort of um, commentary about it. Nothing really is happening here. Okay. Um, and so it just reads as something that like could have come out of a computer, like, okay, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. So this, this is not what you want to do in a task two like this. Okay. In a, sorry, in a task one like this. So, um, here's a suggestion. Let me, let me see if I can maybe suggest you how you could have done this. So I would have probably started by pointing out, I would have separated these, uh, these six in half here. Okay, so I would have had a, a paragraph focusing on the ones that are over 300 a night, and then another paragraph focusing on the ones that are under 300 a night. Okay, so I probably would have started off my description just as you did. The highest hotel rate belongs to the city of Monte Carlo with $338.34. Uh, um, this, is, yeah, you already said that. Um, so then it uh, is on average $11 more expensive per night than the second highest, um, than the second most expensive city, which is Musket at $327.74. Uh, and then you could have said something like rounding out the uh, top three most expensive uh, cities for average hotels is New York at just over $300 per night. And then you can put in parentheses that is 304. Okay, so you see what I did here? I, I use a little subtraction. I said that this was $11 less. You could have done something like that here. You could have said that it is $23 less um, than Musket, but you don't wanna use the same kind of structure um, in all of your sentences. So you do want to vary it out a little bit, which is why I just said that it rounded out that top three group. And then I would have a separate paragraph for the ones that are below uh, 300. I probably would have started saying um, that the uh, next three cities um, are all between 250 and $300 per night for the average hotel stay. Uh, the first most expensive of this group is Key West at $284 uh, per night. And then, you know, again, the same kind of thing. Or what you could have that, so then said is you could have talked about Moscow being the least expensive is Moscow at et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. For a difference of approximately $27 per night uh, with Key West. And then you could say in the middle of them both is Rio de Janeiro at 273, which is $11 less than the average hotel in Key West, but $16 more than the average hotel in Moscow. Um, now, some people, in addition to an overview, they also like a conclusion. I have heard that from some people, and I do actually think that some task ones lend themselves to this kind of thing. So, in other words, you have an overview which states what we talked about before, but then you also have a conclusion which might kind of wrap up um, some of what you talked about. So here, what I think an interesting conclusion would be is if you kind of gave us the average difference. So if you did that math and you said, okay, this is $11 and this is $23 and this is, um, you know, $20 and whatever, and you just did the, the average of that, like that might be an interesting for a conclusion. Okay. So you could say, uh, in conclusion, um, the hotels, um, the most expensive hotels ranged from 250 to $338. Um, and these uh, six, whatever these six cities, um, 
had a difference, an average difference of $11 or $12 or whatever between them. I mean, that was something you could have said. All right, so just to give you some ideas, on, and the, th the reason why this is important is because, as I said before, you do have to kind of stretch these out somewhere, somehow, because you only have six pieces of data. But you, again, have to really kind of develop it um, to make it more meaningful rather than just going down the row, you know, Moscow, or I'm sorry, Monte Carlo, Moscow, New York, etc., etc. All right, so just some ideas there for you on how you should be developing these and uh, and how you how you potentially could, okay? So I hope that that's helpful. Um, I don't believe that you have signed up for the course yet, but I certainly would love to see you on it. I think that you'll find a wealth of information um, on task one for sure, but also on task two. So um, I really do hope we get to see you on the course. Um, I think you'll you'll really see um, amazing difference in in your writing and lots and lots of really useful information. Okay, so um, good luck to you, and I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future.